Will they or won't they? This is a trope so common that any one of us could rattle off any number of examples just taking into account television series that have used it. Maddie and David, Ross and Rachel, Jim and Pam, Eric and Donna, Rory and Jess, Ted and Robin, Sam and Diane, Scully and Muldar. The tension between these fictional characters is delicious. In real life, for the months leading up to the coronation, we have been treated to an absolutely unpalatable will they or won't they? That is, will Harry and Meghan go to the coronation of Harry's father or won't they? Will the two royal fugitives attend? Will they get the apology they are demanding before they deign to make a plane reservation? Will their children go with them? Will they appear on the balcony as part of the festivities? Which parts of the festivities will include them? Who will they snub and who will snub them? Will Harry have a prominent role in the coronation ceremony itself? Well, on this last, one can only hope the answer is a resounding no, because if Harry were to swear allegiance to his father, the new king, as dukes have traditionally done as part of the coronation ceremony, the entire congregation at Westminster Abbey would likely burst into gales of laughter. Can you imagine Harry, after all he has said and done, repeating these words, I, Harry, Duke of Sussex, do become your liege man of life and limb and of earthly worship and faith and truth will I bear unto you to live and die against all manner of folks, so help me God. <laughs> Comedy is not the first element one considers when contemplating the ancient sober coronation ceremony. From the standpoint of common courtesy, along the failure to accept or decline the invitation to the coronation that King Charles has issued to his younger son and his wife is egregious enough. You get an invitation to a party, you let the host know in a timely manner that you will attend or that you won't attend, so the host can plan accordingly. Set aside the fact that this particular event requires planning that would make most of our non-royal heads spin, etiquette alone demands Harry and Meghan pony up a yes or no as immediately as humanly possible. From the perspective of the character of the dithering couple, the lengthy refusal to confirm whatever plans they may be making actually does confirm a number of things, mainly that they are a couple of spoiled, wishy-washy, petulant children lacking both credibility and humanity. Which brings us to the most shameful part of Harry and Meghan's obstinance, the utter lack of humanity in the manner in which they are toying with not only the plans but the emotions of both family and country. For two people who are eager to be labeled humanitarians, their actions in a whole range of situations demonstrate a notable absence of kindness and benevolence. From not allowing Meghan's father to meet his grandchildren because he made the mistake of allowing a photographer to take a few pictures of him many, many years ago, to holding hostage their own attendance at a once-in-a-lifetime event. And by once-in-a-lifetime, I'm talking not only about once for the king, who will be crowned, but about a country and a world whose populations have never, in the main, witnessed the pomp and circumstance of a coronation before and may never again in their lifetimes have the opportunity to do so. As I've said in other videos, the modern royal family serves many purposes in this world, providing a sense of stability in an ever-changing world, championing progressive causes such as climate change, conservation, literacy, women's issues, and perhaps counterintuitively, democracy. And it also serves the weary world with a bit of historic pageantry, theater, if you will, that even this committed liberal finds she relishes. Who doesn't love a glittery crown and a golden carriage? The Authentig urges Harry and Meghan to get off their asses and make a decision about their travel plans. Failing a timely response to this request, it urges King Charles to move the decision along by withdrawing the invitation and to get on without them. They aren't needed for the ceremony, they aren't wanted by a majority of people in the UK, and their sense of self-importance really does need to be taken down a peg. Or several dozen pegs. Your thoughts?